and welcome to this week's Refocus. I'm Tristan Nichols. Now, the theme of this week's show is the power of music. We're here at the Reuben H. Fleet Science Center in Balboa Park. They're just setting up, as you can see behind me, an exhibition all about the guitar. Now, me, myself, I'm a huge fan of music. I've got my ACDC t-shirt, I'm rocking out right here. I actually play guitar as well. There's nothing better than the end of the day and let's just sit down and strike a few chords just to really relax. Now, David Brooks has our first story this week, which looks at music and therapy. When you're smiling, when you're smiling. I get referrals from the nurses primarily, and so they will tell me what the referral is for, whether it's pain management, anxiety, emotional support, maybe they're having trouble coping. And so I kind of have an idea of what their need is. I'd ask what their pain level is and what their anxiety level is on a scale of one to 10. Just so I kind of have an idea of, of you know, what kind of music intervention might be the best for them. And I like to start off with a song, so I always ask them what their favorite kind of music is. And so starting off with a song is, is really nice because music just brings this familiar atmosphere to the hospital setting. So this time when I sing it, I want you to think of all the things that make you smile. As music therapists, we know the power of music. You know, we know what, what it can do, and it's just really amazing to see it happen. The whole and it's just, it's very rewarding. Smiles with you. So we all know listening to music can affect our mood, and that's a very important part of music therapy, is how, you know, we can use music to improve people's mood. Um, but there's a lot more to music than just that. Music is a form of communication between two people. Um, so it's a very powerful function to help you connect with people. But also more and more what we're realizing in neuroscience is that music really touches on many, many different brain processes, not just the emotional processes. Um, music ties into many things like uh, memory, um, auditory processing, language processing. Um, and can we harness that very powerful effect of music in you know, engaging and guiding our movement. Can we harness that to help people with movement disorders? I wasn't quite sold on the idea until I actually started practicing in the real world and seeing the effects that music, the powerful effects that music has on people who are in really hard circumstances in life. Um, so people with Alzheimer's dementia, kids with special needs, people who have pain from surgery, uh, people in medical settings and psychiatric settings too. When I saw the effects as I was practicing in the real world, that's when I decided, I realized that this is the reason I'm on earth, is to provide this medium for people to be expressive and be themselves as much as possible, even going through the hardest times of life. I made it out of place. We all know that you know happier patients heal faster, right? Um, so that's not to be underestimated. Um, also, it seems very clear that music helps connect people. Um, and for you know, patients that are isolated or disconnected, that can be a very powerful thing. One reason why we might be seeing this expansion of music maybe more into medicine is because you know, medicine is evidence-driven, it's a scientific enterprise. So really in the past 15, 20 years, we've been learning more about how the brain works and particularly how music interacts with the brain. Um, which parts of the brain are activated by music. And so as we understand those circuits and those interactions more, um, you know, it opens up the possibility for more sort of targeted uses of music in certain types of therapy. So what I see with Alzheimer's patients, for instance, is uh, these patients come to life. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it when they dance and when they sing to the music. And they're able to tap into this thing that we all have in common, which is rhythm and music, and they come to life. And they're able to communicate in this way. They're able to be part of our world, and we're able to be part of their world at the same time. So it's like this convergence of worlds when people engage in making music. The, the first 
time that I ever saw the power of music, I was in high school and my grandma had Alzheimer's disease. It was at the point where it was getting worse and she was just kind of, you know, a different person. She was showing aggressive behaviors. She didn't, you know, know our names. But there was this day I remember a radio on and it was her favorite song, her favorite hymn. And she sang all the words to this favorite hymn and we were just like, sitting there in disbelief, like, what? You know, like she, she couldn't say our names, but she could remember the words to this hymn, and we were just amazed. And I didn't even know music therapy existed at that time. Good. We all have music within us, whether it's our heartbeat, that is the rhythm, or whether it's our voice, that is, that sings our song. We're all born with music, we're all born to be musical, and we're actually programmed to have rhythm in our bodies. We can all tap into the power of music in order to experience healing. I see them bloom for me and you, and I think to myself, but it's, it's really special, you know, that they're, we're in this environment that's very safe and, and trusting and that they have the opportunity to express those emotions. Because a lot of people, I think, try to hold it in. And, but music therapy provides this atmosphere for them to have a safe place to let it out and then we process through it. It's just, it's amazing what music can do and so I see it every day. What a wonderful world. Welcome back to this week's Refocus on Tristan Nichols. The theme of this week's show is the power of, well, music. We've got three stories coming up. One on a San Diego-based company which makes harp strings. We're looking at karaoke, but first, well, it's Christmas, so why not have some Christmas carols? I don't you know that it is lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Outside the snow is falling and friends are calling you. -hoo. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Now giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, let's go. Let's look at the show. We're riding in a wonderland of snow. It's snowing, we love snow. A giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, that's great. Just holding your hand. We're riding along with the song of a wintry fairy land. Our cheeks are nice and rosy and comfy cozy are we. We're snuggled up together like birds of a feather are we. Let's take that rope and bars and sing a chorus or two. Sing a song or three. Come on, it's lovely Love weather for us. They ride together with you. Just you and me. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, let's go. Just look at the show. We're riding in wonderland of snow. Let's sit that road before us and sing a chorus or two. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Oh, now it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Lovely weather for a sleigh ride together. Lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Oh, sleigh ride together with you. Slay right together with you. Slay right together with you. Come on, it's lovely weather for us. Slay right together with Check the sleigh with bells of bloody fun. La 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 la. Slay right. Karaoke, I froze. Everybody gets their four or five minutes of fame. 
you're never going to see these people again, so, you know, sing your heart out. Make a fool out of yourself, have a good time. That's why I do it. It's not about how good of a singer you are. We're, this isn't, you're not, you're not auditioning for anybody. I make sure I let everybody know that you're here to have fun. No one should judge you for being up there. If anything, they should give you, an, you know, a round of applause for having the courage to get up there and, you know, perform in front of a crowd of people. Because a lot of people don't have that courage. You get to get on the stage, you get to sing a song, and you have a great time. And that's why I'm here. After a drink or two, you loosen up, you're ready to do it, you're ready to go forth, you have a good time, and that's what it's all about. It's about fun. It's not about seeing who sounds like Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey. It's about fun. The spotlight's on them for a minute. They may not ever have the spotlight on them. So that five minutes of, of that song singing, they're on top of the world. They're, you know, king of everything. I tend to get the crowd involved with the songs that I sing and, and make sure that they, everyone else is having fun besides just me. I get up on the bar, I sing, I you know, do some crazy dance moves and things like that. You know, everyone's like, oh, this is awesome. Let's, let's sing some songs. It's having enough confidence to just have a good time and let go and not worry about what other people are thinking of you when you're doing it. I still get scared though. I don't look, I look straight ahead just because I'm so afraid of what just looking at people or looking at my friends and seeing them laughing at me while I'm doing it. I sing in my bathroom, I sing in the shower, I sing while I'm getting ready, so I'm just curious if I actually have a good voice or not, because <laughs> there's only so much you can do with a hairbrush. You can't be angry and sing karaoke. No one's angry. When you're up there singing, you're having a good time. You're smiling, you're laughing, you're enjoying yourself. So. Everybody that comes up on stage and sings, at least I know, I help them have a good part of their day. Okay, this is a steel ball in. We wrap the steel core, or the phosphor bronze core, whatever we're using, around that, and then twist the loose end to keep the string from pulling through the sound box. We're here at Robinson's Harp Shop, and the shop's been in business about 45 years here on the mountain, and we are one of four shops, actually, that make harp strings in the United States, and we are the world's largest provider of harp hardware and strings. And so behind me, we have Gray and we have Klaus, and they're making strings today. We're running some steel strings and some nylon strings. Take it a little tighter. What I'm watching is that knot. It just turned flat. That tells me that one more crack and this thing's gonna explode. <laughs> and I listen to the tone when I'm doing that. I'll try it. Um, these are just half hitches. Enough to keep this all tight and in place. Pressure on it with my palm right now to keep it from to keep it steady. Let go and kind of go back. We've got some orders going out to Australia and the UK. One to Scotland, one to Pakistan. A couple to uh, Canada today, and then other parts in the U.S. like Texas and Oklahoma, some parts in Northern California.
back to Refocus, I'm Tristan Nichols. The theme of this week's episode is the power of music. Now, music creates harmony and it brings people together. Such is the case with Peggy Peaty's next piece, which is all about a San Diego gay men's chorus. so hard at singing that A sharp right and nice and high that what did you do to compensate? You slowed down to make sure it was right. You went, it was but pure. And by then we were past you. Get past it. Here we go. It was but pure love. It, it's not always easy to know what to say to motivate a singer, uh, any kind of musician, instrumentalist uh, or singer to, to produce exactly the kind of sound that you're looking for and sometimes you have to try many different things but um, over the years I, the chorus and I have developed a, a, a vocabulary that I think is unique to our relationship and it works very well. I let the chorus be as creative as they want to be and then sort of rein it back in in the context of, of good choral technique. It can't be a hundred soloists, you know, it's got to be a, a hundred people really trying to sing with a beautiful unison and breathing at the same time. parents saved and saved until they had $75 and bought me an old piano and I sat on uh, phone books and had my first piano lesson at age four. Sang under some really wonderful conductors, people like Robert Shaw, uh, Margaret Hillis, and uh, started conducting the chorus in 1986. One, two, three, and four unto us a definitely has changed people's lives in ways that I, I can't even begin to describe. Um, of course, I remember what it was like living through the, uh, the early years of AIDS in the chorus, um, and, and the chorus literally kept people alive at that time. Um, we never knew from week to week who we would be losing, you know, in the next 30 days, 60 days, and we were singing at a, a funeral or memorial service at least once a month and um, and that was certainly life-changing but but even now that people are healthy and living the spirit and the idea that we're all still here um, really continues to transform lives I think every day Oh, 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 oh,
it's such a joy to see people make new friendships, um, for people to establish family within the chorus where maybe they didn't have family uh, in the traditional sense. Anyone can join the San Diego Gay Men's Chorus. Um, we have, in fact, had members who were not gay, um, and we try to make them feel at home here. Um, after all, it's, it's just music. If anyone's interested in joining the chorus, all they have to do is go to our website. There's a little form they can fill out. We'll get in touch with them. We do auditions three times a year. We have them coming up again just after the first of the year. So um, we would love to welcome a whole batch of new singers. We expect to take in uh, probably 30 to 40 new singers in January. It's, it's like herding cats. So that's going to do it for this week's episode of Refocus. I'm Tristan Nichols. All the stories this week have been brought to you by Peggy Peaty, David Brooks and Charlie Newman. Now, if you like what you see, give us a like on Facebook and Twitter at us. For now, though, I'm going to keep exploring this new guitar exhibition here at the Ruben H. Fleet Science Centre in Balboa Park. I'm also going to see if I can get a, get a few chords and a few tunes out of this, one of the oldest electric guitars in the world. Yeah.